And if it really is the case that Eldians ruled before and were straight up a terror to the world, then the world is not going to turn a blind eye now. They haven't, you know what I'm saying? And now the people of Paradise Island, because they were, uh, their memory was washed and all of that stuff. Now, all of a sudden, they're like, but we're nice. I'm talking about all of a sudden, but, you know, now they're like, we're nice. We're good people. It's like, um, you think that's going to work? <laughs> Do you think that's going to work? everybody to another installment of big tt big titan talk with your girl yes it is i the anime nay and today y'all it's just me it is me myself and i here to talk about aot but don't be too sad because next week we're gonna be back with some cool guests and i'm super excited for that but yeah i'm here today on um by my lonesome but it's all good. We're going to have a good time anyway, and y'all already know I got a lot to say, so let's get into it. But before we talk about AOT, I just wanted to share a few thoughts on some animes in general. So I've been watching a ton of older anime lately, um, and it's honestly been so fulfilling. I used to be scared to watch older stuff because I just felt like it wouldn't resonate with me or I just wouldn't be as into it you know like for me it was like naruto was the oldest anime that i was even really into for real you know i think anyone who grew up in the 90s or whatever of course has seen dragon ball z but it just never really was like my jam you know but yeah so i've been watching yu yu haka show and i am obsessed i just finished the dark tournament arc um and i'm taking a little bit of a break because you know, everyone says that this arc is like the best tournament arc. And so I'm kind of scared that the show is going to take a slight dip from here. But I don't know. We'll see. But I am going to take a little bit of a break from it, though. But y'all, like, I have to agree that the Dark Tournament arc might actually be one of the best tournaments ever. Like, when it first started, I was like, all right, it's cool. I'm enjoying myself. But I dang near agree at this point. Um, And, you know, I haven't really sat down to fully flesh out why i think it's so great and i might actually do like a little video on it but it really is and I, I think it might just be in the growth of every character and getting to see everybody's different powers and what is it called jutsus i'm talking about jutsus what is this, naruto um what are they called like what are the powers in yu yu hakusho called just powers hmm I don't know, but <laughs> maybe demon abilities? I don't know, but I guess everyone's not a, uh, a demon. But yeah, just seeing everybody's powers come out and seeing them train and how quickly they, just how strong they got in the short amount of time during the tournament was super, super cool. And I mean, Yoko, uh, I can't remember if it's Yoko or Yoku. I think it's Yoko. Yoko um, Kirama, I need to see him. I need to see more of him immediately. Immediately. But honestly, my real love is Kuwabara. And so you guys should know that I am, well, if you don't know this about me, I'm gonna let you know right now. I am girl power all day, every day, you know? Um, misogyny has no place in this home and I will call it out immediately. None, no place. But <laughs> at times I have to honestly say I get slight misogynistic vibes from Kuwabara. You know what I'm saying? Like some of the words he uses are just a little too much, a little too much to me, but you know, I recognize this was made in the 90s and it was just a different time and they were on that in the 90s. But, you know, like Kuwabara's whole thing is being a man. And I think at times his view of what a man is is a little bit skewed. But at the same time, also not like he really cares about 
um, sticking to his word, fighting for his loved ones, you know, stuff like that. Like just being a fair and honorable person. And, you know, that's what he considers to be a man, like a good person, like a nice, sweet, um, just like a good, kind hearted individual and just fighting for what he believes in, just fighting for the people around him. And that's cool as hell to me. Um, like I said, ultimately, he's just like a kind hearted person and people really do gravitate toward him. Um, and I just feel like he just has a beautiful, a beautiful spirit. And let's not forget that he has a really cute, um, beautiful spirit woman who likes him. I can't remember her name, but I'm like, you know what? That's not by accident. Cool bar, I got it. And <laughs> let's also not forget that he is a regular. What is this? A core bar stand podcast? I don't know, but he's a regular human, y'all. Like that is blowing me away. Like the fact that he is so in tune with his spirit energy and inner powers and all of that stuff, and his sister, y'all. His sister is my favorite character, and that's bogus because I can never remember her name. But she is my favorite character. She's quickly becoming one of my favorite women in anime and right now I literally am blanking on her name but she's just so cool now her falling in love with that one guy and if you watch you Hakusho, show you know what I'm talking about that was ridiculous now that had me blown but uh, <laughs> you know she's great but yeah the fact that they're just regular humans and they have all of the spirit energy and can interact with demons and all these spirits and stuff I'm like okay yeah they're just so in tune I love that but yeah like Kopar is literally fighting like actual demons and winning so yeah, I'm messing with him. But like I said, also, I'm rewatching Dragon Ball Z. I've seen so much of it as a kid just through sitting with my brothers and watching it. Like, I've definitely seen all of the sagas. But when I tell you I don't remember anything, like I remember, you know, what all of the characters looked like and their different transformations. But like the story, I do not remember at all. So I'm rewatching and I'm at the part where basically Vegeta just fucked up and let Cell power up. And I'm so weak because I keep thinking to myself that this part should be called I am Vegeta meets I am Cell because <laughs> those two characters are the most like, you know, I am powerful. Like, how dare you? Like, you know, Vegeta's whole thing is I'm the same prince. How dare you? You should know better um, than to challenge me. And Cell's whole thing is like, I'm the perfect creation, uh, the perfect creation. Don't you know? But yeah, Vegeta, stupid, stupid, stupid. Like, oh my God, I just can't even, I just can't even. Like, does no one in this series have an ounce of sense at this point? Like, truly, truly. Like, every time someone warns anyone on the show of how powerful someone else is or how hard the fight is going to be, Vegeta and honestly, every single body else is like, they're no match for us. And I'm like, yes, they are. <laughs> why are y'all not listening like this man future trunks future trunks is the only one that has some dang sense you know and honestly trunks is quickly becoming my favorite character he's powerful smart he seems very kind he loves his parents and you know i'm like this man came from the literal future where all of you have now died from the sands and y'all are trying to tell me that that just don't matter like what he said just don't matter like that's just not true like it <laughs> But yeah, so that's where I'm at in Dragon Ball Z. But yeah, I'm pretty much hooked. Um, <laughs> pretty much hooked. Like I said, Cell is in his last, I think this is his last transformation, but you never know. And so the fight is about to begin with him. Trunks, um, the last episode I watched, Trunks was really trying his hardest to defeat Cell before he fully re-upped. But you know, y'all know how that go. Um, but I digress, you guys. Y'all came here to talk about AOT. So let's get into AOT. Oh, man, oh, man, the season, eh? Crazy. Um, but, you know, I was thinking about this. So I'm, I'm making another video on Attack on Titan for my YouTube. Oh, shameless plug. But <laughs> um, it requires me to look up different clips and stuff like that from um, different clips from past seasons. And it just reminded me that this show has always been ludicrous. It's always been epic. And, you know, it just feels a little bit more epic because I, for me personally, because I feel like they're really trying to throw a lot in there. Um, but it has always been insane. Like thinking about this season, um, the past few episodes that we saw, uh, particularly 
the episodes where Aaron fought Warhammer Titan and Jaw Titan. And that whole sequence, like from the moment the play started and Aaron, we see Aaron in the basement, he confronts Reiner up until everything happens with Sasha. I feel like we're just crazy episodes. Like those episodes were just so well done. And, you know, the action was just on par. It was just, you know, it was good. Um, but I was thinking about um, the part two of season three, when they fought, when all the scouts fought Armor Titan, Colossal Titan, um, and Beast Titan in Aaron's hometown. What was it called? Shiganshia or something like that? But that whole couple of episodes, those sequences were intense. Like, I mean, we thought Reiner died multiple times about three times he got straight up stabbed by levi i mean they definitely thought they got him when he was an armor titan for him like multiple times i was like oh my god like reiner's gone and i don't know like even at the end of it when Bertolt ends up getting eaten by Armin, like all of that was just intense and to be honest those episodes might be my favorite uh, my favorites of the season, especially leading up to the basement and us getting to see everything from Grisha's perspective. But yeah, those might be some of my favorite episodes. But yeah, that just kind of just gave me a reappreciation for the series as a whole, because I feel like I've been so focused on this season. But I'm like, honestly, this show has been just insane and incredible the whole time. But I will say this most recent episode that came out, personally, I needed it. And I had a friend of mine um, tell me that it was a little bit he was like you you're probably gonna be blown at this episode and I'm like I'm definitely not blown at all like it wasn't what I was expecting it to be like I definitely thought maybe we get a conversation between Zeke and Aaron or something like that but you know we didn't um, but I honestly needed this episode and I needed this episode because I was not trying to believe that our man Aaron was just out here y'all I was not trying to believe that Aaron was just freaking lost and gone but I mean he is <laughs> okay he is out of here he is not the same at all and I honestly needed to just see this really for it, it to get through my head um and I don't know if y'all have noticed this but throughout Attack on Titan as a as a series we've gotten so much inner dialogue from Aaron you know most of it is him trying to work things out in his own mind but uh this time we didn't this season we haven't gotten we haven't gotten any of that um i mean you know we're usually in a lot of people's heads we'll get some talk from armin and everything but man we do not know what's going on inside aaron yeager's head at all you know like literally all we see from him are stale faces and weird grimaces and you know then he speaks and that's pretty much it but john pointed out john pointed out let me get his name right put some respect um he pointed out something that's super important to me to remember as well and he basically talked about how at the end of the episode he brought up the fact that Aaron had would never have devised a plan in the beginning that would put di like directly put his friends into danger never like that's Aaron's whole thing was protection making sure everyone's good fighting for everyone's safety but this time he literally did that exact thing like he was like this is what I'm doing either y'all gonna help me or not like literally either y'all gonna help me or not and yeah that's just that was just so unlike him but I needed to hear John say it to be honest to get it through my head but y'all his story is back and she is dot 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 pregnant question mark what y'all she looks stressed and pressed to me I can't lie okay I'm just like how is she feeling about all of this but I'll come back to that in just a little bit. But yeah, that took me by straight up surprise. <laughs> when they dropped that in, I was like, what? But um, also another surprising thing, Mikasa is actually royal. And the last ho uh, hope for the hero, y'all, y'all know I cannot say these Japanese words. Lord have mercy. Um, Hizuru, Hizuru, Hizuru clan, Hizuru. I don't know. I feel like I just need to say it. Hizuru, Hizuru, whatever. <laughs> she is the last hope for that clan and excuse me so you know everyone who thought lady Hiyome was a good guy was right but partially um you know obviously she doesn't feel like eldians or you know people from paradise island or devils or whatever else she probably wouldn't be there or maybe she would because you know her whole thing is the money the resources 
and LMAO, it's wild because literally everyone's goal, except for Paradise Island and some of the Eldians, is world power. Like, this show has become about world power, okay? It's just, it's some complicated stuff. World power, who is in control of resources and all of that other <laughs> complicated stuff, but... Yeah, Lady Kiyomi um, is in need of some resources. And, you know, how is Zeke going to promise them that? Like, how is Zeke going to promise them the, what was it, the ice, iceberg? Ice burst. Ice burst. <laughs> ice burst stone? Um, how is he going to do that? <laughs> you are literally public enemy number one of Paradise Island. And you're going to be making all these demands and plans and stuff involving them when you aren't even really wanted there yet? Like, I don't know. That's that's a lot for me. Like Zeke is really kind of really going out on a limb here, but we're going to see how that goes. Um but yeah, our girl uh Mikasa I don't know y'all though. I, I love Mikasa and she's honestly one of my favorite characters of the series, but you're trying to tell me that she's about to be what is a ruler or something? I just I don't know. I don't think she's the one for the job. I can't lie um she's just giving me like silent assassin work in the shadows for the cause not really giving me the face of the cause and you know she's giving itachi if you will she's definitely more of an itachi but you know i'm definitely excited to just to see how that all plays out and how that all goes it, it kind of i hate to see that you know lady kiyome is really just in, it's it's just so self-involved and you know not really giving a care for real about the eldian dilemma um, and really just kind of working for herself or I guess for her country, but yeah, it, Mika's is definitely just a pawn in that, but I mean, she sees it, she knows it, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes. I mean, I hope that Mikasa, <laughs> Mikasa lives, lives to see that. I really hope she does. Um, but yeah, back to everyone being like, what in the hell is Aaron thinking wanting to side with Zeke. Okay, now hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. I'm not saying that I think Aaron is right for going about the things he's doing. Like, absolutely not. He's clearly just, I don't know. But I just feel like Parody, Paradise Island in a way for me is just stuck in Paradise Island world. You know, they're so focused on making the rest of the world not attack them anymore which you know obviously makes sense <laughs> and i just feel like they're not understanding the gravity the reach or the scope of the situation for real i feel like you know they're so stuck on let's just make everyone like us and show them our character and all this stuff but it's it's so far beyond that like so far beyond that and um we've already heard that Marley dang near treats their LDNs the best and they ain't treating them so well, okay? We we see that. We see that the LDNs are struggling in Marley and yet we heard from Udo uh, a couple episodes ago, mm, episode three or four or so, I don't know, but we heard from Udo that Marley, you know, is decent and in other countries, LDNs are persecuted even worse. So in my head, you know, these meetings that the Paradise folks paradise island folks want to have with other countries are futile all right and if it really is the case that eldians ruled before and were straight up a terror to the world then the world is not going to turn a blind eye now they haven't you know what i'm saying and now the people of paradise island because they were uh their memory was washed and all of that stuff now all of a sudden they're like but we're nice i'm talking about all of a sudden but you know now they're like we're nice we're good people it's like um you think that's gonna work <laughs> do you think that's gonna work no and you know i'm not saying that the rumbling is the only option i don't believe that but you know i'm not a war expert i can't lie so i don't really know what else they should be doing but it just seems like the the talking is not gonna work like there was literally a straight up war over this you know so i don't know talking don't seem to be it but also the rumbling don't seem to be it either so We'll, we'll we'll see <laughs> we'll see how they they squash this one i honestly want to rename this podcast what they gonna do because <laughs> i'm like what are y'all gonna do to rectify this like how are we gonna solve the alien dilemma but yeah um yeah but 
guys, let's get into Aaron a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, so what in the hell? No, let me rephrase that. Who in the hell does Aaron think he is to grab Hanji like that? Okay, Hanji should have slapped him, but also it was very Hanji like the way she, you know, handled the situation, being like, oh, you perv. Like that whole thing, I was like, oh, this is definitely Hanji. Um, but I low key wanted for Hanji to slap the mess out of him and him be shocked that she did that and him or her be like, don't forget who I am. And even if she, I feel like if she would have did that and still walked outside and been like, oh, I'm stressed. Like, I shouldn't be the commander. I still think that would have been a good little scene. But, you know, it was very Hanji the way it went. But I just feel like that was so ridiculous. Like, th at that point, I was like, oh, yeah, Aaron's gone. He is gone. But, I mean, ultimately, I do have faith in her and Commander Pixis. I think that they can keep most situations under control. And by situations, I do mean Aaron. Um, but we'll see. Because... I, I mean, Aaron, what Aaron said was right. I can't believe he said it, but he said, you know, I ate the Warhammer, right? Ain't no containing me. I ate the Warhammer Titan. I am the Warhammer Titan. You think you can control me with these walls? You can't control me. Like, that's crazy. But I mean, he's not lying. He literally has. At this point, at this point, this man has three Titans in his body. He is the strongest Titan, okay? Let me re-say that in all caps. He is the strongest Titan. And if he's not, something's wrong. But at this point, this man has three Titans inside of him. And I feel like if Aaron were to go against anybody, he should win. Like, can Beast Titan take him? Are we going to see Aaron and Beast Titan fight? I don't know. But I just feel like at this point, we shouldn't. Like, I don't see how he will win, you know? Like, I just, there's, there's no beating Aaron, for real, at this point. Um, and in that moment, in that moment when he grabs Hanji and it looks like he's going to transform, I'm like, what? I, I really thought they were about to go there. And that would have been straight up insane if he would have transformed right then and there. But sadly, we didn't get that. But that would have been ultimately just so messed up. Um, but... I also feel like in his defense, um, I do kind of just feel like being a variant Titan or having one of the nine Titans really does just make you have a different perspective. I mean, it has to skew your thinking on all the whole situation. You know, if you're a normal Eldian or you're a person on Paradise Island, like I said, you you are like Pixis said in this episode, you guys are just now learning about the entire world. Everything about this is brand new to y'all. Y'all don't know what's going on. But Aaron, Zeke, um, Peak, all of them, they have the memories of all of these people stored inside of them now. So it's just it's just different for them. I feel like it has to be. So, yeah, I don't know. Again, Aaron is wilding, but I just feel like everyone is just forgetting about that. And by everyone, I mean everyone that's in the show. You know, like they're so shocked that Aaron is potentially maybe siding with Zeke, but it's like, how can you be you know they're both they are brothers they have the same father and in a way you know they're both kind of going for their father's goal Zeke is continuing his father's work with you know trying to free the Eldians and Aaron is continuing his father's work with being the attack titan and trying to freaking I guess also free the Eldians of Paradise Island I don't know but yeah, I mean, they ultimately have the same goal. Now, are they going about it the same way? Originally not, but now maybe Aaron is like, we don't got no choice. But yeah, I don't know. Well, we will see. That's my new tagline, y'all. We will see. Um, But to get into that a little bit more, the original plan, y'all, this episode, I can't lie, I had to rewatch it a few times. Like this was giving me season three vibes with the whole Historia stuff and all the cool, like, I did not study this stuff, okay? Like, I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> what are we doing? What is this meeting? But so the original plan was for someone of royal blood to inherit the Titan, which by the Titan, I'm saying, okay, so this is what I'm confused on. In the meeting, they said that, you know, Zeke wanted someone to inherit his beast Titan, but... Then they were talking about the founding titan, so I don't really know. But the plan is for her story, or the plan was for Historia to inherit one of the titans and to have hella kids 
so that they could be more royal blood folks. Um, but Historia said, bump all that. Y'all can miss me with that Titan, okay? I am not doing that. And she's pregnant. Now, obviously, I'm sure that there's a lot more to that. You know, we don't get any words from Historia. Again, she was just not looking like herself to me. So, I don't know. There has to be something going on. I feel like that baby about to come out as just straight Titan or something. Like, that That baby damn near it. I don't know. I just feel like that's not about to be no normal baby. Like, that's so random. Like, why does she just get pregnant? I don't know. It's so random to me. But, you know, it could just be to protect herself because they were discussing how her being pregnant really does throw a wrench in the plan. Like, she can't eat his Titan. But it could be the case where her being pregnant pregnant is just buying more time for her. And, I mean, that really could be Aaron's plan. Like, he could still be trying to protect her. Or maybe someone else came up with that. Who's to say? But, yeah, man. But my question is, why didn't Zeke have any, uh, have any kids? Like, if it's so important to continue this royal bloodline and to have royal folks to inter- inherit these titans, like, why did he not have children? But, yeah. Why does the burden have to fall on the woman, y'all? Why does the burden have to fall? Literally, they're like, hey, Historia, so not only did you have a sucky childhood, but guess what, girl? You are now the queen of this nation that is basically in shambles. <laughs> oh, also, don't forget, let's throw in the monkey wrench that, uh, I'm talking about monkey wrench. Let's throw in the wrench that um, everything you know about the world is false. And it's actually a vast place where everyone hates you. <laughs> but remember, you're the queen, so you have to deal with it. Oh, also Historia, we want you to become a Titan and have a thousand kids. <laughs> sound good like literally that's so messed up that's so messed up and Historia was she was ready for it she was ready for it but nah girl sit down you pregnant I don't know whose idea that was but shoot I dang near would have had to make the move too um (laughs) and so okay I wanted to bring up this scene and you know if anyone wants to hit me up on instagram and kind of discuss this please do but the scene where the commanders of paradise island are discussing her and discussing her pregnancy uh when one of the guys one of the marley servants i guess you could call them um goes to the basement to get them more wine they're like nicolo is there and he's talking about the bottle and it just seemed like a very menacing scene like the music was menacing when he's like oh are you talking about this bottle of wine like is this the right one i'm like did he poison that bottle like is he poisoning them or something you know but i've kind of come to the conclusion that it seems like nicolo is a like he's uh softened like he doesn't seem like as anti eldian at all like obviously he was you know in love with sasha and has a good relationship with the scouts and the sasha's dad and stuff so i don't know that kind of threw me off i'm like what's what's the plan with that i just feel like ultimately whatever is about to happen next is gonna just involve people and stuff that i just am not expecting um but you know that's why i love attack on titan i love it you know everything always makes sense to me it might be unexpected and kind of like where did that come from but at the same time they set everything up like in the moment it might feel like whoa 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 but ultimately when you look back it's like oh yeah you guys have been building all of this this whole time so i'm excited to just to see how they tie up some of the you know random ends that they're creating right now but yeah i definitely was like nicolo about to pull some now i guess but is anyone on the same page at this point anyone <laughs> Aaron on one page, Mikasa and Armin are on one page, Jean and Connie are on a totally different page. I don't even know. Levi's only page is making sure Zeke stay in his place. Zeke is on his own page. Hanji don't know what her page is at this point. You know, she's trying to keep the peace and do her best, but mugs are just running wild. I feel like everyone under Commander Irwin just were like, we are afraid of him and we just have to do what he says. And I feel like people are not giving Hanji her respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just cannot believe this man, Aaron, really grabbed Hanji up like that. I really was shook. Like, I, I, at this point, he's not on my even freaking top seven list, top eight list, none of that. Um, Will he be redeemed? We'll see. I just, y'all, I just cannot believe he did that to Hanji. Like, (laughs) that is the worst part to me. Him going to parent, him going to Marley and infiltrating and all that, not even that bad to me because 
I do genuinely feel like he thought it was his best course of action to give him time. Like, he keeps talking about, we need more time, we need more time. And I feel like he thought that that was his only option. You know, stupid option. It wasn't his only option, but I feel like that's really how he felt. But that's so disrespectful. You really gonna grab Hanji like that? Oh my gosh. But yeah, I'm kind of over him. But yeah, no one's on the same page. And my other question is, why is the threat of the rumbling not enough to calm people down? Like, in my head, what do we need to actually do the rumbling for? Like, people should know that these titans exist in these walls. And, okay, now that Aaron did all of this and he basically essentially answered their declaration of war by killing hella people in Marley, um, you know, now it's kind of too late. But I feel like truly of all the Eldian powers like the great Eldian powers you know Zeke all of the nine titans everybody like if it was they're all on one accord like listen here folks listen here the rest of the world okay y'all must have forgot who we are (laughs) we cooperated long enough and we're trying to create some peace in this mug but at the same time we are still titans and we still can activate this rumbling don't play with us i just feel like if they came at it with a more <laughs> serious nature then i just feel like what 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 can the rest of the world do really what can they do other than be like okay you know and if it comes to the point where you know they get to the point where the rest of the world is still like we are going to attack then i just <laughs> I feel like at that point, the rumbling must happen. But it, I feel like if the threat, the threat should be made first before they even really go into it. But, you know, maybe the threat is not enough. Maybe the threat is not enough. Because I guess, you know, what, I'm gonna take that back because they've the world has already felt like the rumbling might happen. You know, like thinking back, King Fritz really did say these Titans are these walls are aligned with Titans. And if y'all mess with us, y'all will regret it. And what did Marley do? mess with them they took that risk um and you know other countries probably would too because again what is this show about resources (laughs) what is this world seeming to be about resources all war all everything is literally about power and resource and money and all that stuff so it's just crazy that attack on titan which is you know such a fantastical show and has these creatures and monsters and all this stuff um really does come down to that and just how right now the human existence is just so it's just focus on that it was so funny because one of the commanders at some point said really i still don't understand what a nation is and that's so funny he's like what the hell is even a nation like do we trust the woman from uh his or what but yeah that was just kind of funny to me <laughs> but yeah and at one point mika says like they fear us because they don't understand what we are nah girl they know who you are sweet girl they know who you are okay y'all are titans <laughs> they've seen who y'all are y'all are still coming y'all don't know who y'all are like paradise island eldians do not know who they are they're just now being told that they are you know these things but or that they have the potential to become these things um So, yeah, the world is afraid of y'all because they've seen firsthand what y'all have the power to do. Now, granted, yes, like everyone who is alive right now doesn't hasn't seen it because what what was it? A hundred years ago, the war was or so. But, you know, either way, they still know they've they've read the history books and all that stuff. So they know what it is. Um, So, yeah, I just I just again, just feel like just the amicable chats and stuff between nations is not gonna work like either y'all need to threaten the rumbling like if y'all don't lay up and lay off we will activate the rumbling or at this point like ooh, i don't know there just needs to be some united eldian front uh for real and it, it almost has to be housed on paradise island like i think paradise island has to be the hub where you know yeah i mean is i mean paradise island seems to be quite large like not saying that i just feel like eldians should all just uh you know segregate themselves there not saying that's the answer at all but shoot i mean dang near might have to be the answer because (laughs) because i'm just like literally they're being persecuted everywhere and they have the power you know within them and especially with the nine titans to in my opinion, become, if not the ne- like the world power again, but to at least protect themselves, I guess. 
yeah, man, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. And honestly, it just, their dilemma really does so closely parallels, you know, the minority issue in general between, you know, and any minority group in most countries, you know? So, dang near, whatever they decide to do with the Eldians, <laughs> are we gonna have to do the same thing no nah, i'm kidding i'm totally kidding hopefully hopefully everything works out though for real i'm definitely like wow am i watching black plight unfold before my eyes on attack on titan or what but yeah i mean you know everyone everyone ultimately wants peace but people are also just greedy and want resources and stuff like and are willing to use the audience to get what they want it's insane but yeah, I'm glad at the end of the episode, Connie also just pointed out that Aaron was laughing when Sasha died because I felt like he was too. You know, it kind of seemed like he might have been, you know, doing a little bit of like a cry. And I think that when we watch the dubbed episode, it will sound more like a laugh because again, you know, I feel like the intention when you were watching it in Japanese, you don't really understand the context. Like you aren't hearing sarcasm in people's voices. You're not because you don't you don't understand what they're saying. You're not hearing like the humor or the subtle con context and stuff like that. So I think when we see the when we see the dubbed, we'll hear the laugh. But yeah, man, this man really laughed and it turned into a little grimace because I feel like he was like, what the hell am I doing? I'm losing myself. But yeah, I have no clue what this man is thinking at all. If you know what he's thinking, hit me up, okay? But do him and Zeke have similar intentions again? I will say I think that they do. I really do. So I'm excited for this next episode. I'm hoping we get to see that meeting between Zeke and Aaron finally um i think we're about to see some i think we might get another like setup episode perhaps before we get a little bit more action back into the action but i don't know i feel like it's about to go down zeke zeke is in the woods levi has a close eye on him and aaron is threatening to just fuck shit up so <laughs> we're gonna see what happens y'all but that is all i have for this episode again this has been another installment of big titan talk y'all thanks for rocking with me and coming back week after week uh if you have friends that watch attack on titan you know put them on put them on to the pod and you guys can check me out on youtube as well at the anime nay all one word um releasing some new attack on titan videos and also gonna be making some videos like i said on some of these older animes that I've been watching. So I'm excited about that. And if you want to connect with me on social media, talk a little bit more about AOT, hit me up at B underscore anime nay. And with that, I'll talk to y'all next time. Bye.